everyone. It's Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, almost over the hump. And we all know what day that is. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy day. I'm your host, Mitch Ewan. Uh, this sh show is uh, hosted or sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum with funding from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. So we've got a really great show today. We've got the Hawaii State Energy Office on board. Uh, with Gail Suzuki Jones uh, as our guest. And she's the program manager for the Environment, uh, uh, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy uh, Program Office. Did I get that right? Buildings Program Manager. So welcome yeah. on board, Gail. And uh, Gail's gonna talk to us all about their show, uh, about their program for uh, Hawaii Green Business and uh, what that's all about. It's, uh, it sounds like going through the slides before the show, uh, it looks like a pretty, pretty good program. And it's gonna save Hawaii a lot of uh, CO2 and a lot of money. So Gail, how about talk, talking to us about your program? Welcome on board. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks so much for hosting the show and inviting me to be here today. Um, I'm gonna to be presenting some information and an update on the Hawaii Green Business Program. Um, I wonder if Eric has the slides up yet. Eric, are you there? He's there. <laughs> anyway. Okay, excellent, mm -hmm. great. So I'll be talking to you a little bit about the program and if you want to advance the slide to the next one, that would be great. So uh, what is the Hawaii Green Business Program? It's a program that recognizes business that go beyond compliance. And they're greening their facilities, whether it be hotels or resorts, restaurant, food service, office, retail, as well as events. And why would a business participate? Well, one of the things is it receives technical assistance, uh, realizes savings, and it gets promotion for its efforts. So where can you get more information? Uh, we have the website listed on the slide there. Uh, greenbusiness.hawaii.gov and how to participate. First of all, a business would complete the checklist. Secondly, we would conduct a site visit. Um, in these days, it's either virtual or via images that are submitted. It used to be that we would go out to the business in person along with our green team and check to make sure the items in the checklist were verified. And lastly, the businesses agree to mentor another business because as we in, here in Hawaii know, word of mouth goes a long way and hearing it from another business uh, means a lot more than hearing it from the state of Hawaii. When does this happen? It happens all year round and the recognition ceremony occurs once a year. In fact, we just had one uh, last Friday uh, at 10 a.m. with the governor in our first virtual award ceremony. Who are our partners? Uh, I'm from the Hawaii State Energy Office. We work closely with the Department of Health, the Board of Water Supply, and the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, as well as other organizations. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Eric. Uh, these are some pictures from some past ceremonies. You notice how close people are standing without masks, that would not happen <laughs> in these days, unfortunately. Um, but here are some images from past ceremonies and they were occurring at the governor's office, as you can see with a big seal in the background. The top slide on the left, you might recognize some folks, our former DBED director, um, Eric Al from the Hotel and Lodging and Tourism Association's Engineers Advisory Council, as well as the Princess Kailani chief engineer, uh, Karen Nakaoka, who was with the HLTA at that point in time, and the director from Department of Health, um, Deputy Director Keith Kaoka. And then in the picture below is a picture of our green business team. As you can see, it takes more than one person and a few partners, but quite a few people that uh, work closely together uh, from our departments, as well as with the support of interns. So uh, Gail, that's, that's quite an investment of people. One of the questions uh, I was gonna ask you is, what about cash? Does the energy office, I mean, 
having all those people and people inspecting and all that's 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 a big investment. But can businesses expect any uh, cash to support their programs uh, from the energy office? Directly from the energy office, no. We provide technical assistance resources. We point them to um, sources of potential rebates and incentives. And we have interns that also help walk businesses through the process. In many cases, help them complete the checklist and or find resources where they don't have resources. Well, that, that's all very valuable stuff. What about the Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Energy? Do they have a role to play in this? Yes, definitely. Hawaii Energy plays a very important role. Um, they provide the rebates and incentives to the businesses on Oahu, Maui County, as well as the Big Island. And for KIUC, uh, for Kauai, we refer them to KIUC for similar resources. But those would be the financial. Our office doesn't have, unfortunately, those same financial resources that the other entities do. Hawaii Energy has a good, you know, a good uh, level of uh, resources because they, they take a little percentage off everybody's uh, electrical bill, utility bill every month. Correct, correct. And we also do a number of different educational and training um, sessions co-sponsored by Hawaii Energy. So they really help get folks up to speed on many different levels. Okay, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, the next slide, please. The next slide shows a picture from our first annual virtual ceremony. Uh, it has the Governor Ige on top, um, as well as slide four, um, this slide of the awards that were actually um, given out, not in person, but uh, received through the mail, as well as um, I delivered them in person, <laughs> just so, because I wanted to make sure they got them. So um, they include a plaque from Found Wood. It's an operation on the North Shore made out of reclaimed wood, felled trees oh, uh, here in the state. Uh, they get a certificate, as well as a commendation from the governor and a window decal and some um, swag from the Board of Water Supply. Uh, we actually gave away some hand sanitizer, um, some pens and a reusable bag. That's, that's really great. So it was the first annual virtual award ceremony. We're of course hoping it's, hoping it's the last virtual uh, award right. ceremony. <laughs> first and last, yes. We uh, will have a video of that on our website um, posted very shortly for those of you who are interested. It's only about half an hour, and um, I think you'll get a feeling for who's participated, who got recognized, and what they did to get recognized. Okay. I think it's quite valuable. Good deal. So anyway, our partners, like I mentioned before, range from state and county to Hawaii Energy, also uh, professional lodging and tourism members, um, Hotel engineers, we also work with HPU, UH and the community colleges and have secured some very capable and knowledgeable interns that have also in exchange gotten the experience of working with us and the businesses. Uh, the US Green Building Council Hawaii, as well as AIA Honolulu participates, BOMA and APA Chamber of Commerce, and then with nonprofit um, associations such as the Surfrider Foundation, uh, who has a program that's similar with the ocean friendly restaurants. Uh, we co promote with them and their program. And the Tourism Authority has supported us recently just for a short period of time in helping us expand our program and allowing us to hire an intern from HPU to help us. He was a marketing finance intern and was very valuable. Um, in the time that he worked with us to help us expand. And then, of course, um, the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. EPA. Um, here's a list of the awardees from this past ceremony that range from hotels uh, to venues here on Oahu, as well as on Maui and Kauai. Uh, next slide, please. And then these are the other awardees from office and retail, as well as restaurants and events. 
So as you can see, it really ranges from a number of different business types, as well as to a number of different sectors and what they are focused on. So we try to meet people where they are. Um, and that's why we developed the event program because that is a much less rigorous checklist, but people can kind of get acclimated and involved in the program at an event basis and then always move up to say their office or business following that. So I do have a question. So what, 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 is, uh, what is your impression of the degree of enthusiasm, you know, the uptake? Is, is, uh, are people very enthusiastic about this program or are, you, uh, are they like, oh, well, so what? What's you know, it's interesting experience? you should ask that because in the past, uh, we've done promotion through the Tourism Association, Restaurant Association, et cetera. And this year we thought because of COVID, we might run into a problem, you know, with businesses not wanting to participate. But it's interesting because they actually have been contacting us somewhat out of the blue. Um, there have been three hotels, um, two on the neighbor islands, as well as one on Oahu, and one event that have contacted us just right before the ceremony. So we're starting out with about five businesses right out of the gate in January, which is very unusual. Um, and so we're really looking forward to 2021 uh, to be a bigger and better year. Um, and COVID doesn't seem to be affecting the response um, to these businesses. In fact, some may have more time to sort of pursue alternative areas of interest while they're not so busy um, and getting back up to speed with the economy, uh, you know, getting back to normal. Well, the, the other driver, of course, is this, this can potentially save them a lot of money. So, exactly. You know, when businesses are hurting, anything that can help them improve their efficiency and save them money is a good is a good thing as well. I would I would think. That's so true. In fact, that the next slide that we have on metrics is a great slide to um, illustrate that. This is just from the fifteen businesses that were recognized this past year, um, and you can see the amount of solid waste reduced, uh, gas reduction, as well as energy kilowatt hours reduced, and water reduction. Um, Mitch, you had some great ways to calculate. <laughs> this? Yeah, I calculated how much water was in an Olympic swimming pool. And for all those who want to know, it's 660,000 gallons. So 91 million gallons uh, turns out to be 139 Olympic swimming pools full of water, which is a lot of water. That is a lot. Yes. And then for the energy one, you also, um, being the yeah, energy I, you are. <laughs> I multiplied the energy by 27 cents a kilowatt hour just to, you know, whatever it is, but using 27 cents, that works out to around $6 million. So that's, that's pretty impressive. And so that's just with this group of 15 businesses. Um, right. So you might imagine how that might be expanded upon with more participation. Right. Okay, next slide, please. So the Hyatt Regency Maui, um, this is one of the hotels that participated and has participated in past years. Um, talking about going beyond compliance and above code, um, they participated in the US Green Building Council's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Program for existing buildings. And this is a quite rigorous. It involves a lot of commitment from their side, a lot of data collection as well as certification fees that are involved. So they've made a commitment to this um, at their property level, and they've gone from lead silver level to lead gold level. And so that's been really impressive. Um, they mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. have a strong commitment to renewable energy, and they've increased the size of their PV array to 2,138 panels um, on top of of the rooftop to produce wow. renewable energy. Mitch, did you? That's a lot, no, that's a lot of PV, so. <laughs> it's a lot, yep, that's right. And the next slide, please. Here's what um, Hawaii Pacific University at Aloha Tower Marketplace has done. Um, in terms of renewable energy and energy efficiency, uh, one of the champions there is Clarence Nakube. And I think he's been on uh, Think Tech before, but 
I really think he needs to come back again. And he's a real champion for these efforts um, in terms of continuously improving upon what they're doing, not just with energy, renewable energy and efficiency, but also with waste management. And he works closely with the students at, as well there. And so there's a strong, strong team that he has. Um, and he has a strong commitment to this. And then um, the next two slides um, are focused on sort of a COVID response, because as we all know, these are different times and hotels have definitely adopted and adapted and shifted towards a different way of doing business. And so they have um, really focused on um, health and safety and cleanliness. And so the protocols that they've developed are um, in this slide about social distancing, um, sanitizer stations, as well as more frequent cleaning. Um, they have an EPA rated hospitality grade disinfectants which are used and they definitely are doing their part in terms of um, making sure guests as well as their employees feel safe. Uh, and the next slide, the Outrigger Reef uh, Waikiki Beach Resort. Um, their COVID response, um, I've noticed has been on different commercials and ads, but they have the Outrigger Clean Commitment Program, um, as well as Hotels for Heroes. Uh, they're giving back to the community, as well as to the um, essential workers. And they definitely are looking at using um, new products and enhancing their cleaning uh, protocols. Okay, the next slide. Okay, this shows just sort of the range of different programs that we have available uh, for different sectors, hotels and resorts, office and retail, restaurant and food service, grocery stores, events and venues. And these are the areas in our checklist on the right that we focus on um, energy and water conservation waste reduction and preventing pollution, natural resource conservation, as well as giving back to the community and preserving the culture. Okay, the next slide on why to participate. Oh, it's getting so bright and sunny in here. <laughs> <laughs> no lack of sun here in Manoa. <laughs> okay, that's a little we bit. We don't have sun over here in Kaneohe. <laughs> <laughs> How to find the right place. Okay, so why to participate? Why would you participate? Um, definitely, um, some of these entities have just such a strong commitment to it that year after year they participate on their own, coming back some of them four, five, and six times to get the recognition. And the Holly Corps recently said they're just working on each time improving their score. And so it just goes to show that they have a commitment to continuous improvement. They also have um, a commitment to their clientele and to their um, employees and providing a safe and healthy place to stay as well as work. And they um, also see that it creates a positive relationship with regulators. So one of our partners is at the Department of Health. And so when we do our site visits and um, compliance checks, um, Department of Health is definitely, you know, there as well as Board of Water Supply. So, so Dale, yeah, tell us a little bit about the scorecard. You said they're trying to improve their score all the time. What does that mean? Right. So there's, um, if you go to the next slide, um, it just shows the steps to participate. And that slide up on the top right is a slide of the checklist itself. And so I think the hotel and resort one may be a little over 20 pages worth wow. of items in um, energy, water, waste, pollution prevention, all the categories that I mentioned before. And what it does is it really gives folks a sense of where they are, but also where they could be, things they could implement in the future. And so right. it's kind of um, inspirational or aspirational um, as well as very practical. Um, the site visit and verification, we're kind of refining that and figuring out new ways to do that remotely, but it used to be in person as is shown in the slide. 
And then the next slide just talks about recognition because we feel that the annual award ceremony is extremely important, that it's a great way of businesses being able to demonstrate not only um, within their own operation and organization, but to the public and greater community, what they've done and what their commitment is to going green. And then maintaining the recognition, like I mentioned, some of them are really proud to come in year after year. The Kahala Hotel and Resort is another one of those um, that is always challenging themselves to do better and more. And then the last slide uh, just gives some contact information of where you can contact me um, via email or phone um, and get more information because we're starting to recruit for next year's round of businesses. So please let us know if you're interested. So uh, a question I have, is this, uh, is this just Oahu centric or do you have, is this, uh, how do you handle all the neighbor islands? I mean, are they all it part is, of the program? Yeah, it's definitely statewide. And um, all of us in our team are located on Oahu. So it's been quite challenging, but now with the technology as it is, um, we've developed ways to get around that. And in fact, I think we had more people at the awards ceremony this year because of it, uh, we had, I think it was over 70 uh, participants. Oh, wow. So yeah, so a lot of people could link in on their own time from wherever they were, rather than having to fly over if they were from a neighbor island or take time out of work to, you know, to drive over. Um, and then that other slide, I know um, Eric, you pulled that up, is also um, interesting because it shows the map, thank you, of where these businesses are located. And you can click on it and get uh, the businesses by sector as well as their location. And we're going to be updating this map as well for the next round of awardees. But thanks for bringing that up as well, Eric. So I have another question about, uh, you know, so you, you go out around all these businesses and you have a checkoff list. So have you identified, like, where are the real gaps? Like, is there like a trend among all of them? Like, is there any one area that everybody could improve on? Be it air conditioning, because you know we put in an air conditioning uh, proposal earlier this year. Um, you know, oh, where we could right. save like fifty percent or sixty percent of the cost of air conditioning. So, have you identified any particular target areas where the HSEO, the State Energy Office, would like to really zero in on? Well, that's interesting that you should mention it. Definitely, and especially with COVID, ventilation, air conditioning, as well as air quality is definitely something that we're looking at. Um, Howard Wick from our office has been doing a number of different uh, webinars with the IES and Hawaii Energy on UVC, lighting as a way to um, sort of address COVID. There are also ways to do it that potentially could affect with added filtration, the um, air conditioning usage and therefore energy usage and cost. But we're trying to, you know, kind of explore different methods um, of both keeping um, a building safe and healthy as well as um, not necessarily um, increasing their energy bills as a result. Um, natural ventilation is so important, you know, where you can get it and where it can be used. And I know this isn't a business, but as far as schools go, um, there's been um, some talk of more um, natural ventilation, opening the windows instead of using air conditioning, looking at outdoor classrooms, different creative ways to address um, both air quality as well as energy usage. So one of the uh, one of the programs on the Big Island, Sustainable Energy Hawaii, I had them on my show, and what they found out was just a standard air cleaner, like portable air cleaners, like you can buy them at Costco, mm -hmm. and they have HEPA filters in them, and if you just put one of those in a room, it'll clean the room um, because it filters the air through the filter, and it's uh, it, it's uh, a filter that can can uh, filter out uh, virus. So for example, um, one of the restaurants over on the Big Island is gonna put in or has put in these portable air filters in you know, like the bar area, the restaurant area, even in the bathrooms 
and so what Sustainable Energy Hawaii wanted to do was spread them throughout the schools in every classroom. Because one of these filters, apparently, I don't, I'm not exactly, I guess classrooms come in different sizes, but one filter can pretty well filter all the air in, in a single classroom. Maybe you have to have two, depending on the volume in a particular size. So there's an area that state energy office should be looking at as well. I mean, you know, the Department of Health needs to get involved. The Department mm -hmm. of uh, Education really, uh, you know, likes this whole idea. But they were doing it on their own. They were raising funding through crowdsourcing to pay for these things. Right. We had looked into that because we had gotten an inquiry from a school. And I right. think at least one of the filter types that we had looked at, um, I think it was a EPA Energy Star rated one. Right. Uh, just with one filter, you could filter a classroom the size of 900 square feet or so. Yeah. So that's usually about what a portable classroom type space is um, approximately. But um, yeah, definitely we're looking into different areas such as that, not just you know for businesses, but for schools and um, offices as well. Right. We actually have some of those filters in our own office right now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you have to do that. So and are there, are there any other areas? We're just about uh, ready to close. Uh, I told you it would go fast. Uh, but are there any areas that uh, you feel we didn't cover that you would like to give a shout out about or you know, uh, comment on? Well, I really want to emphasize um, that our program is very flexible. It's very accessible, it's free. We do not charge any fees for uh, participating in it. Um, it definitely might involve some of your staff time to go through the checklist, but the sections can be separated apart if you have different areas of your business that take care of different um, particular needs. And we're happy to walk you through it. Um, I think it's about an hour's worth of time that it has taken us in the past to just go through it point by point just to get a preliminary sense of where your business is at. And if you've gotten the required number of points to meet the threshold, great. Um, but if you don't, you sort of have knowledge of what you can do in the coming year to be able to qualify as well as get recognized for all that you've done and are doing. So it's a great way to kind of get a benchmark of where your business is at. And then also a way to um, provide you with some inspirational, um, points to try to achieve um, to move up higher and higher. So how do you get the word out? I know you said, uh, you know, the people in your group uh, have to agree to act as a mentor. Do you have any, uh, do you do advertising or like uh, any spots on TV or is there, is there a way to do that? Through, or do you do it through trade associations? How, how do you get the buzz out? Yeah, we work closely with the trade associations like the lodging and tourism, the BOMA, you know, the IFMAs, the, um, the Food Industry Association and others, um, and some of the design professionals that have contacts within those groups, um, and they have clients that are interested in it. Um, we've done some things for Olelo, but we have a very limited budget, so uh, we aren't able to advertise um, widely. Uh, but now that we have some video clips from the award ceremony that we just did, we may use those because there's some really great testimonials in that. Well, you also have a Think Tech Hawaii show now that you can uh, link, link people onto as well. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, that's right. And I hear that they're recorded and able, are they archived somewhere? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're, and, and they can go global. The whole world oh, can wow. see this. So, <laughs> so you're gonna be a you know, global uh, celebrity after this. Yeah. That's so we're, at, we're out of time. So I've been very, uh, I've been delighted to have uh, Gail Suzuki Jones, who heads up EERE and the uh, uh, division in the Hawaii State Energy Office, doing really good things for Hawaii. So thank you so much, Gail, for coming on the show and for all the great work you're doing to keeping us healthy and engaged in good things. Thank you, Mitch, and thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Yeah. Take so care. Aloha, everyone. Uh, we'll be back next week at Hawaii, the state of clean energy.